In the previous video, we learned how to draw Lewis structures to represent covalent bonding in a molecule. In this video, we'll follow the steps we outlined to learn about some exceptions to some rules and look at more complicated examples. Let's start with ammonia, or NH3. Recall that the first step in drawing Lewis structures was to count the total number of valence electrons that we'll have to work with in the Lewis structure. So how many total valence electrons will we have for NH3? Nitrogen has 5 valence electrons and each hydrogen has 3, so the total number of valence electrons that we'll work with is 8. The next step is determining which atom is the least electronegative so that we know to put it in the middle of our Lewis structure. So which is the least electronegative atom in NH3? Hydrogen is the least electronegative atom in ammonia, but wait, there's 3 of them. So how do we know which hydrogen will go in the middle? Well, actually, this is where we run into the first few exceptions to our list of rules we outlined in the last video. Hydrogen's valence electron shell can only hold a maximum of two electrons, so it's not able to have an octet. Hydrogen's rule is that it always wants to have a full duplet, or a full valence electron shell containing two electrons. So what do you predict this means about the number of bonds that hydrogen can form? Recall that in the last video, we said that each bond contains two electrons. This means that hydrogen will only ever be able to form one bond with atoms. This means that it can't be a central atom, it will always be a terminal atom. So in this case, nitrogen will be in the middle even though it is more electronegative than nitrogen. Let's continue drawing our Lewis structure. The next step is to make a single bond between each atom. This means that we will have one bond between each hydrogen and the nitrogen. Notice though that this only accounts for 6 out of our 8 available electrons. According to our next rule, where would you predict that the last two electrons will go? This last rule states that we should add leftover electrons as lone pairs on terminal atoms. But we just said that hydrogen can't make more than one bond because it can't have more than two electrons in its valence shell. This means it certainly can't also have a lone pair. So we'll need to add these two leftover electrons onto the nitrogen atom. This is another exception to our rules. We can only add leftover electrons on terminal atoms if those terminal atoms don't have a full octet, or duplet in the case of hydrogen. In this case, the terminal hydrogens already have full duplets, so we have to add the lone pair onto the central atom. Another time that we must add lone pairs to the central atom is if, after adding leftover electrons onto terminal atoms so that they have full octets, we still have electrons left over. Let's now take a look at another molecule, carbon dioxide. How many total valence electrons are there for this molecule? Carbon has 4 valence electrons and each of the oxygens have 6 valence electrons, which brings our total to 16 valence electrons. Which atom will go in the middle of our Lewis structure? Carbon is the least electronegative atom in carbon dioxide, so it will go in the middle. Notice that we don't have any hydrogens in this molecule, so we don't have to consider any of the exceptions that we just talked about. Like always, we'll start with putting a single bond between each atom. Since we drew two bonds, we will subtract four electrons from our total, which means that we have 12 more electrons to work with. Next, we will put the leftover electrons around the terminal atoms. As we do this, we use up all of the electrons we had left. So let's double check our work now. Does each atom have a full octet? If we count the number of electrons around each of the atoms, we see that the oxygens have eight electrons around them, since each has three lone electron pairs and makes one bond with carbon. However, carbon only has two bonds and no electron pairs, which means it only has four electrons around it. So how do we fix this if we don't have any more leftover electrons? Up until this point, we've only dealt with lone electron pairs and single bonds, but carbon must achieve a full octet for the molecule to be stable. This can be done through double bonds. This is the next step in drawing Lewis structures. If an atom doesn't have an octet, move a lone pair from a neighboring atom to make a double bond. If we move this lone pair to be shared between carbon and oxygen, carbon gains two more electrons in its valence shell for a new total of six valence electrons. There is now a double bond between the carbon and this oxygen. Notice that the number of electrons around oxygen didn't change. It still has the two electrons we just moved, it is just sharing them with carbon now. Also notice that our total number of valence electrons didn't change. The carbon and the oxygen are sharing these electrons. Now that carbon has six valence electrons, it needs two more to achieve a full octet. So how can we change our Lewis structure to represent this? To make it so that carbon has a full octet, 
we will take two electrons from the other oxygen to form a double bond between the oxygen and the carbon. This oxygen will still have a full octet, since its electrons are being shared, and the total number of valence electrons has not changed. Theoretically, we could have taken two more electrons to form another bond between the carbon and the oxygen to form a triple bond, because all atoms would also have a full octet if we did this. However, we'll introduce something else we have to consider in the next video that will show us why this configuration is not favorable.